Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Casa Power Electronics here. Today we are taking a look at a Danaher Motion Solutions Inverter Drive. And while that is also pretty smashed up, it appears to be what is something like a 700 to 1000 watt servo driver. So uh, let's check that out. Danaher Motion, who produced this, DMC2, appears to be a somewhat unknown company, at least to my knowledge. Maybe goes under other brand names like Dover or Thomson Linear or Cole Morgan. Again, other brand names I'm actually not aware of. The marking plate here on the side, we see it's part number 9032, catalog number 30515P. Input rating 3.5 amp, 240 volt AC, and same output rating, 0 to 400 Hz. And other than that, we can assume that this is some kind of motor drive, primarily from the three phased plug sitting here at the top. And then we have all our control inputs, outputs, maybe some bus sitting here at the bottom. And at the front, we would have the link between all these controllers which usually sit at the front. The two switches up here is most likely addressing on the bus. I had to drill out a few screws due to uh, yeah, the cabinet being bent and corrosion again. So here we just have an aluminum backplate completely bent. And of course there's still two screws at the front. Okay pretty smashed up shell. We have no need of that anymore. But quite an interesting power electronics part we have here. Look at that. Huge braking resistors inside the drive. I don't remember when I last time I saw internal braking resistors. Those are almost always external. We have a large heatsink sitting at the back. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six diodes. Something three light here. And at the opposite side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six devices as well. Appears to be the control board, and then we have the power electronics board underneath. And then we have a pin header connector. But wow, look at this. That's a huge amount of discretes and controllers and drivers and stuff. That's really, really complex. Could also be that it's actually just a lot of components from being from a different age. I did not see any date marks yet. This is marked CPU 2E, but not really any date marks. We have Samsung RAM, we have Xilinx FPGAs, what I assume is some kind of driver over here. Maxim Intel, is that an Intel CPU? It's uh, stamped 1995, so yeah, this is quite an old design. Down here in the, what we can say is the upper side of the power electronics, seems to be some kind of isolation here between the boards. So let me just get these apart. Everything is taken apart and everything just falls apart now. We can see here that it's tested by Marie W and in circuit tested by Marie W. So that's the um, motor driver, the output part sitting here. Okay, everything actually comes apart now. So this is the complex driver board of uh, the actual motor drive. And the reason I guess for this is of course from all the yeah, advanced electronics and we have some current transformers. And our switch is sitting over here is K30N60 and that's most likely ITPTs. Six of those, so that's a full bridge, three-phased inverter. Very nice. The back side is a bit peculiar, and I think I can guess the application from just looking at the huge braking resistors. 
this is a breaking board. So all this does is actually use the diodes to break down the drive, store some energy in the DC link, and what cannot be stored is burned in the power resistors. So it consists of a single switch to uh, yeah, change direction of energy. And then we have DSE 13006 diodes sitting up there. And again, six of them. So it's a three-phased four-bridge rectifier. And the switch we have over there is an IXSH35N100A, most likely IGBT. Thank you for making it this far in the video, and I hope that I by now earn your like and perhaps even a subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me if you leave a comment and I will answer every comment. This small server drive was not really that kind of giving teardown. It did contain some very nice ITPTs, diodes, and also some nice 50 ohm, 50 watt power resistors. So four of these goes in the power resistor drawer. Very nice to find 50 ohm. That's quite suitable for a nice load when we do with 50 ohm measurements. So until next time, see ya.